Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Guru. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, so this is what is going to be part one of a three part video of the 100 subscriber uh, winner project. Um, so I was final, finally able to get a hold of uh, one of the individuals that commented on the uh, I would like to be entered into the the contest um, I actually tried a, a couple people in and, and the, the magic of YouTube uh, the message clearly we're not getting through so I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and I thought it was just me but anyway long and story short we have a project so so what we're gonna do is uh, the individual has chosen to make a, um, a little sign with a, a, an inlay and some engraving off the CNC machine here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the process. So part one is going to be uh, finding the image, creating the kind of base design in Inkscape um, using vector art. And then part two is going to be pulling it into Fusion 360, uh, creating the 3D model, showing you the tool pass, uh, probably walking you through how I created the tool pass. And then uh, part three is going to be probably some, a series of time lapse, uh, showing you the, the, the CNC cutting uh, the parts, and then maybe some time lapse of me assembling it, and then a, a final wrap up and then the unveiling of the uh, final project. So uh, so that's the plan, and we're gonna shoot for that. Hopefully it'll be done soon, so uh, that's where we are. So uh, let's uh, jump right into uh, part one. Stand by. Hi, hello. So, okay, we're back. Um, I just wanna show you real quick how I did the, um, found the image, made the uh, mock-up in uh, Inkscape, and then uh, went back and forth with a couple different designs, and then here we are. So what I first started off to do, I went to Google Images. You see this in front of you. I typed in uh, Sledgehammer SVG. Uh, it came up with a bunch of images here. I trolled through um, these uh, looking for something that would work. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I went pretty far down in this page. Lots of different options here. Uh, but the most simple one right up here in the top, this guy seemed to be the easiest one to use. Uh, I actually liked this one. It, it, it was already black and white. It might have been easier to use, but um, the handle is way too long and I just didn't want to edit it. So I took this guy in um, and I uh, saved that as uh, if I clicked on this and then said uh, view image. What you can see there is it's actually a PNG. So I saved the PNG and then uh, went into Inkscape and I traced it. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to launch Inkscape here. Um, and I don't know why it is opening up the largest size window I could possibly imagine. All right, so we got this uh, image here. Um, I guess I can't drag and drop now, can I? It's interesting. I'll tell you what, I will open with uh, other Inkscape. Oops. There you go. Uh, so this little, you get this little import sign here. You always want to embed it. You don't want to link it because then it's um, actually part of the image. So let me close this guy. Um, and there we go. So we got our image here. Um, the, the, you click on the image, it highlights it, and then you go in here and you say trace bitmap. Uh, now the trace bitmap has a bunch of different options. I'll walk you through some of them. Uh, so the, the two that I use the most is brightness cutoff and edge detection. I'll talk about what those mean in a minute. As well. uh, and then the last one I use occasionally, which is color quantization. Um, so brightness cutoff really just detects the brightness between um, the background and the foreground. It's very useful when you have high contrast images like this. Um, edge detection uh, does something similar, it just tries to detect all the edges. In this case, you have some edges in the middle of the part which are not going to be useful for us, so it may or may not work very well. We'll try them both and I'll show it to you. Uh, the last thing is color quantization, which really tries to pick out all the different colors and gives you multiple SVGs of the different colors. That is really useful if you want to make a uh, cut or a part that has different colors in it as well, or and in this case if you're CNCing, it's going to be different woods. 
So in this example, uh, I could see using color quantization by pulling off the hammer head here, having this be a different color, this little yellow part here, and then the bottom being a different color. So you could easily see something like walnut, uh, some cherry, and um, maybe some padauk or, or um, purple heart or something like that, just to give a nice, interesting contrast. That's probably a little bit too busy, to be quite honest with you, in terms of the number of woods, but we'll see what's going on. So we got the image selected. Um, we'll do brightness cutoff here. I'll just do, you click uh, in the window here and do an update. It's going to give you a preview. So with the brightness cutoff at, at 450 here, 0.450, it does um, a, a decent job of outlining it, but you can see here because the, the value is kind of low, um, uh, it misses that entire section in the middle. So if we bump it up, uh, and hit update, you see it just blackens everything out. There's no contrast whatsoever. Um, now in this case, perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want. Um, on the flip side, if we do edge detection, I hit update, you see what it does is now it's hollow. It's only detecting the edges. Um, and if you increase the size here, you get a little less fidelity with the edges. Um, and if you decrease it, uh, you get more fidelity with the edges. You can see here, it got that little bar. Um, this little bar here showed up in that little bar right there. So, um, and if you decrease it even more, you get even more fidelity. You're starting to get these edges in here. Um, and if you go all the way down um, to zero, uh, you get a little bit more fidelity, not a whole lot more. Um, the last thing I'll show you is the color quantization. In this case, eight should work okay. Um, you got this color, that color. Um, if you bump it up to 16, uh, you might get a little bit more. Um, yeah, you get more shading up here on the top. Uh, if you drop it down, by the way, to two, just black and white, it usually doesn't give me anything. I don't know why. Um, even four, um, you're still getting some craziness going on there. So I really only ever use this. I generally use it at eight or 16. Um, uh, if I've got uh, some images that I want to capture some some detail in. A couple options here I just want to show you. Suppress speckles is very helpful. If you have something that's a very blurry image, it's going to suppress it a lot. Um, smooth images, uh, smooth corners here, I use a uh, uh, value of one, smooths out the, the spikiness um, of the corners a lot. Um, and then the optimize the path, I actually turn, I usually turn this up to one um, or higher, maybe two. Uh, really try to get a nice clean arc out of uh, out of what you're trying to do. So in this case, I think brightness cutoff gave me um, what I was looking for. I'll click OK. Um, dismiss that window. And now what you see here is this is the vector image and this is the original PNG. Um, now the vector, uh, it, it, for our purposes, it's exactly what we want, right? So I'll click on the node here, and what you'll see here, um, it really optimized the path. There's only a handful of nodes, and we got four, eight, uh, twelve total. Um, that's pretty amazing. So nice, easy, rounded curves. Uh, this one's a little bit tight, um, and so I'll show you a little trick. Um, this one, I'll do it on this one, and we'll. We'll do it all the way around. So on the so if you click on the little node editor here and you click on it, it'll show you all the nodes. Um, if you add a couple nodes around the corner here, um, just like this, I usually do two on each side, um, and then you select the node that you want to modify. You hit Control and you click on it. It's going to cycle through the different types of nodes. Um, this little round node here um, uh, is an auto smoothing node. It's this guy right here. It uh, auto smooths it, so it makes it automatically round. Um, and that's the easiest way to get a nice smooth corner is you just auto smooth it. Um, it's going to be a lot more apparent over here. Um, so I'll put two more nodes out here and I'll show you why I do two in just a minute. Um, so click this guy at auto smooth it. See how it kind of pulled it in? It's not really what you want. You kind of want to pull it out like that. Um, but you don't want it bumping out like that, right? So that's why I did two. Um, I pull these guys out a little bit, uh, which pulls the corners down, and now you have a nice, smooth, sweeping corner there, so you can pull this out a little bit more as well. Um, oops, let me pull that guy up just a tad. Um, that's why I do uh, four uh, or two on each side, so you can adjust that angle um, pretty easily. And I try to keep them fairly far from the corner, not too far though. That gives you a little bit of trade space to move with. Um, but it still allows you uh, the ability to tweak these corners. Now you could just go in and move the handles all around um, 
and adjust the arc if you're a super like spline expert. Uh, I find this auto smooth just works the best and then you just tweak the corners as required. Um, everything else here looks uh, perfectly fine. Actually this is a little, it looks kind of dorky. Quite honest with you. Um, you can pull this down, um, pull that corner up. Um, okay, see how it's just not looking very good. Um, it just looks silly. We'll smooth that guy out a little bit. Um, smooth that guy out a little bit. Pull that guy up. There you go. That's a lot better. Nice and round. Kind of symmetric looking. Perfect. Alright, so uh, now you can just uh, click back on your little uh, uh, select thing. Select the image and delete it. Um, pull this guy over now. A couple things to note. Um, uh, document properties here. Uh, I set my document properties either inches or millimeters depending on what I'm working in so it'll give me some sense of scale. In this case it's one inch by one inch uh, not what we're looking for. We're looking for something significantly bigger so we'll set the width to uh, the width really doesn't matter so we'll say five by five um, in this case height because we're gonna make about a six inch tall board so we'll just set it five by five um, and then zoom out you can see here uh, so the, the hammer is a lot smaller than the size of the paper. Uh, so to resize it, you can just grab this guy and move it around, um, but that kind of um, destroys your aspect ratio uh, a little bit. So we'll hit Control-Z, hit this little lock guy, um, and now now when you resize it, say let's make it, um, let's make it 4 4.5 .5 tall, um, it automatically scales the width to the size of the height and keeps the aspect ratio. So that's kind of what we're looking for right there. Um, and then all you have to do is save it as an SVG and you have your vector there. Um, and the beauty about a vector is you can resize it and it doesn't change any of the geometry. You can scale it, uh, rotate it, uh, flip it. If you make one of these and then you say, let's say control D, we'll duplicate it, right? Um, and then you go under path. I think it's under path. Uh, maybe it's under, where is it? Here we go, uh, flip horizontal. Now you have kind of like mirrored uh, and they're completely identical except they're mirrored. Um, and then you can do simple things like uh, you can align them um, you know, on center. Where's the center guy? Center horizontal right there. So now they're completely aligned and then you can distribute them evenly if that's what you want to do. So um, just simple things like that. And, and because it's a vector, uh, you can now take these two and uh, uh, select them if you scale them uh, pull the little things here they're going to scale equally um, and be exactly the same size um, and the arcs are the same and everything's the same all right so that's a quick tutorial on how to pull an image into um, off the internet interwebs um, into Inkscape turn it into a vector uh, which is the starting point for all of our cam operations uh, so next stop I'm going to pull this this image into a kind of a base uh, diagram um, of what we're going to actually do so stand by okay so what you have here is the final design obviously we created the sledgehammer uh, svg sort of trace node here which is this guy in the first half of the video here uh, what i did is i just created a nice uh, square around the outside and then added the letters in here to add the letters here you just like the the text tool here you type in the words and then uh, you can align using the different uh, values uh, with the uh, right here with the text and font area here so you select the font um, in this case I believe uh, Apple Chancery is the font I'm using and then it's uh, right justified in this case so uh, there's no magic here. Uh, this is just the SVG outline, which we will then turn around and import into Fusion. I've set uh, the outside here to be, uh, let's see, it's going to be 9.5 inches wide and 6 inches tall, uh, which seems fairly reasonable to me. So uh, that's the design we're shooting for, which we will uh, spotlight in the next video. Okay, so there you go. That was uh, part one. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a little Inkscape action, a little Google, and then a little Inkscape action. So uh, you, you now know how to take uh, essentially any random non-vector image, pull it in an Inkscape, trace it, and do what you need to do with it. Um, so I hope that's useful to you. Uh, I, I find it incredibly useful. I use this all the time. Uh, Inkscape is very powerful. I, I am probably only scratching the surface of what I can do with it. But uh, for right now, uh, that, that's perfect. So uh, that's, again, part one. Uh, stay tuned for parts uh, two and three. Uh, you know, part two being the uh, Fusion 3D part of this exercise, and then part three being kind of the build part. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, as always. Um, if you don't like the video, uh, thumbs up anyway. Uh, and stay tuned for uh, the next parts. Uh, please leave comments down below if you have any. Um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.